Let's try a stoichiometry problem that involves only moles. So we have the same chemical equation as in the previous video, balanced chemical equation. And the problem here states, given one mole of C4H8 and six moles of O2, predict how many moles of CO2 and how many grams of CO2 form. Well, let's go with this first question. How many moles of CO2 form? Well, let's examine this. If we have, if we're given one mole, hmm. if we're given one mole of C4H8 and six moles of O2, According to the recipe or the equation, we're going to get four moles of CO2 because stoichiometrically the proportions are one to six and four to four. So given these, these stoichiometric equal amounts, if you will, we'll get four moles of CO2. Now that seems pretty straightforward, I think. Now that's that question here. We addressed the number of moles of CO2 that would form. Now about how about the grams of CO2 formed? If we know that four moles of CO2 formed, or we have four moles of CO2, now the question is how many grams is that? Well this is where molar mass comes in to help convert us from the mole world to the gram world. So your job now is to take the four moles, if you want to approach it using dimensional analysis, find the molecular weight or the molar mass of CO2 and multiply that by the number of moles, and that will convert to grams. Now why don't you pause the video and figure that out, and I'll come back with the answer. So the molar mass of CO2 is 44 grams per mole, or 44.0, I give it three sig figs, 44.0 grams per mole. And multiplying that by the four moles of CO2, units cancel out and you end up with grams of CO2, 176. So this process of translating moles into grams is very important. Let's try another one. C4H8 in excess of O2. Predict how many moles of CO2 and grams of CO2 would form. Well, in this case, we have plenty, plenty of O2 because it says we have an excess, meaning there's tons of it around, so much that we don't need to be concerned about it. What we are told is we're only given two moles of this reactant. Well, if the ratio is 1 to 4, because we're, we need to look at how much CO2 we're forming, if it's 1 to 4, and as you saw before, if we had 1 mole of C4H8, we'll produce 4 moles of CO2. Well, if we had 2 moles of C4H8, predict you would get how many moles of CO2? 8, correct. So in this case, we would simply predict that we would get 8 moles of CO2. And now, if you have 8 moles of CO2, and the other question is, how many grams of CO2 do we get? We approach it the same way. We use the molar mass of the CO2 to convert us from moles to grams. Moles cancel out. 
and we're left with 44 times 8 grams of CO2. And that would be 352 grams of CO2. Here's another variation of only mole problems. Given five moles of each reactant, predict the amount of CO2 formed, both in moles and in grams. In this case, we have five moles of each reactant. What my approach in this situation is to test each reactant Test each reactant for the amount of CO2 each would produce. It's important that we say would or we'll see could produce. So, if we just isolate the C4H8 first and ask ourselves, well, how much would 5 moles of C4H8 produce? How many moles of CO2 would that produce? Well, if it's a 1 to 4 ratio and there's 5 moles to start off with of C4H8, that means we're going to produce 20 moles of CO2. Now mathematically I could show this like this. You could use dimensional analysis. Start off with 5 moles of C4H8 and my conversion factor is actually going to be the stoichiometric ratio between C4H8 and CO2. And what I want in the denominator is moles of C4H8. We approach this the exact same way we've been approaching dimensional analysis all along. We want to cancel out the units. In this case, we want to get rid of the moles of C4H8. Now I know that there's a 1 to 4 ratio between the moles of CO2 and C4H8. So you can see here my conversion factor is simply the mole ratio between CO2 and C4H8. And that works out to be 20. That checks out with the reasoning that was described up here. So if, I, if C4H8 had its way, it could or would produce 20 moles. Well, let's see how much 5 moles of O2 would produce. Well, this is a little bit more complicated. It's a 6 to 4 ratio, or 4 to 6 ratio, depending on how you want to look at this. So when the numbers look kind of scary or freaky like this, I like to just set up a dimensional analysis like I just did down here. So I'm going to start off with 5 moles of O2 in this case. And I want you to tell me, or tell yourself actually, what conversion factor, what mole ratio should belong here. I want you to pause the video and figure that out, and then come back and check. So what we should have come up with was 6 moles of O2 because the 6 came right from the chemical equation and the 4 moles of CO2 which also comes from the chemical equation.
So the mole ratio from the chemical equation, the recipe, so to speak, is 4 to 6. And the moles of O2 cancel out, and you're left with moles of CO2. So it's 20 over 6. Or if you want to make a mixed number, it would be 3 and 2 sixths moles of CO2 produced. And of course, this is 20 moles of CO2 up here. Now, what do you do at this point? Well, I write 20 over 6 here. Now, you pick the smaller number. This is the only number that makes sense. And that is because, given these two quantities, the O2 is the one that's going to limit the amount of product produced. Because you don't have enough O2 to produce 20 moles. You have plenty of C4H8 to produce the 20 moles. But if you only have 5 moles of O2 lying around, you're, you can only produce 20 over 6, or something less than 20. So in this case, we have something called a limiting reactant, and that is the O2. So the answer to the question is 20 over 6 moles of CO2. And the next step would be to convert the 20 over 6 moles of CO2 to grams. And you would follow the same process as before. Multiply the 20 over 6 times 44 grams per mole. Now to complete the thought, if this reaction were to be carried out, we would pretty much consume all of this. That would get consumed. But we would have some of this remaining. Some would, be, would remain. Right now, we're not going to calculate the amount that will remain, but just be aware that some of the excess reactant will remain. Here's a problem I'd like you to try. Given 3 moles of C4H8 and 8 moles of O2, predict how many moles of CO2 and grams of CO2 would form. So pause the video and come back and check your answer. So, my presentation is as follows. I have the C4H8 check, where I take my 3 moles of C4H8 and see how many moles of CO2 would be produced. Well, I would get 12 moles of CO2 from the C4H8. Doing the O2 check, have the 8 moles of O2, the ratio between CO2 and O2 is 4 to 6, and that 8 moles of O2 would produce 5.33 moles of CO2. Well, it seems that the more realistic number is going to be the 5.33 because it's the lower one. And just to note here, it's interesting that just because there's more grams, excuse me, more moles of O2, 8 moles versus 3 moles, one would predict that this reactant O2, being that it has 8 moles compared to the only the 3, would produce more CO2 than the C4H8. But in fact, that's not the case. And that is because of the 1 to 6 ratio between these two reactants. So carrying it on, we choose that 5.33 moles is the realistic number, and so that's what we're going to answer. That's the number of moles of CO2 produced. 
and then continuing that, converting that 5.33 moles of CO2 to grams, you do that by multiplying the 5.33 moles of CO2 by the molar mass of CO2, and you end up with 235 grams of CO2.